Welcome back. Joining me now is Eric Finman. He is one of the youngest Bitcoin millionaires and the creator of the Freedom Phone, which you may have seen me promoting recently. Eric, thank you for being here. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We're going to get to the Freedom Phone, but actually you're really fascinating for a lot of other reasons. So I kind of just kind of want to delve into the history of Eric Finman. First and foremost, how old are you? I'm 22. I'm an old man. You're 22 years old, which is incredible. Um, and you kind of placed a bet on cryptocurrency. So first, if you could just for viewers describe what cryptocurrency is, when you may, took that chance, and why you thought that cryptocurrency was going to be a lucrative investment. Absolutely. Cryptocurrency is one of the, the most amazing inventions of the 21st century. It allows you to carry all your wealth on something that's the size of the USB stick, uh, uh, a USB stick. And it's just an incredible invention not to have to rely on the government, Federal Reserve, or, or corrupt governments like in Venezuela. Uh, you know, on, and America, and America, and all that, because <laughs> they mess with your bank accounts here, and we've had friends that, that that's happened to. Um, America has a history of doing that, actually. Uh, and then, yeah, so it's an amazing invention, and, and can also be a good investment for some people. And that's uh, I got into it when I was twelve years old. Twelve years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, what kind of a twelve-year-old were you? <laughs> uh, a weird one, I guess, because uh, <laughs> some kids had video games, some kids had sports. Mine was Bitcoin. Wow, that mm -hmm. is incredible. So you kind of had that mindset already kind of focusing on what was going to happen in the future. And I actually read something that freaked me out, and I'm probably going to talk more about it in my next episode. But they were kind of running, you know, they do these sort of, they run a simulation um, at the World Economic Forum. And they said, well, what would happen in a scenario where the electricity went down, you had no access to your bank accounts, no access to your phones, no access to anything. And I thought to myself, the idea that a cyber pandemic could happen and you could have no access to your money is actually a very very scary concept and a very scary idea. And it does sort of feel like the federal government is kind of assuming a lot of control right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's very true. I mean, I, that's why I am the most pro-Bitcoin person, most pro-crypto currency as a whole person ever, because they can just, yeah, as soon as they want to, they can freeze your money and uh, and make it so, you know, you can't move anything and, and it, it's terrible. So, I mean, I feel like some people are already going through, uh, uh, you know, a cyber pandemic, at least when they're money, you know, right. it's it's really bad. Like even just, you know, innocent people, even non-political people are just getting their money, their money frozen. And this, this isn't a problem in Bitcoin. And you see even on- Banks a, denying people, saying you're not allowed to bank here anymore because you're a conservative. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's uh, tremendous. Like I have so many friends that's happened to, and it's, it's incredibly sad and it's incredibly sick and, and uh, yeah. How much money did you make off of Bitcoin? Um, so yeah, I guess right now I have over 430 Bitcoin. Um, so that's not too bad. I guess whatever the current price is, you can do the calculation. What is that? You have to do the calculation. You have to do the calculation. Um, that, that's a big number. Um, Ish. What is, I guess last time I checked, it was around 30,000. So let's make it 400. I don't know. I think that that ends up being a lot, like tens of millions. Tens so, of millions of dollars. Off, yeah. And you guys were 12 years old. Uh, yeah. Well, I first got into time. it. Yeah, exactly. First got into it. I mean, Bitcoin was just a few dollars. I went, my older brother brought me to this protest, and it was very much like a, a footloose-like protest. Some a guy named Adam Kokesh was arrested for dancing at the Jefferson Memorial. And uh, he was one of the first political influencers at the time where he would pick little laws that were just outrageous and apparently highly illegal to dance at the Jefferson Memorial. So he did. He got body slammed. Um, uh, uh, you know, literally, they, you could hear a video skull like crack on the on the floor, and it was terrible. And uh, we went to all go protest that because it was it was awful. But um, and then you know they had Black Hawk helicopters at this protest where everybody just hundreds of people came to dance. They had Black Black Hawk helicopters with people on the sides of the helicopters um, uh, uh, with machine guns like it's like Vietnam, and they had horse riot police just all for people dancing. Um, and then in the middle of running from the police, some guy. He had this uh, orange shirt on with a B on it that looked like a dollar sign. And, uh, and I asked him, what's that? And I was just 12. And he said, uh, he said it's Bitcoin, man. It's going to end Wall Street, bro. And he <laughs> ran off. And 12-year-old uh, Eric was like, whoa. Well, exactly, exactly. And my older brother and I, we looked into it and uh, went home. And just that, that became my obsession. What does a parent do when like a 12-year-old becomes a multimillionaire? 
Um, well, I became multimillionaire at 18, so at 12, Bitcoin was just a few dollars mm -hmm. um, and all that. And uh, so it was, it, was, it was slim pickings. Back then, I was mowing lawns to be able to get more money to buy Bitcoin just because I, I felt it was the next big thing. And, you know, you might feel something the next big thing, but it's kind of like world peace. You wish for it to happen, but you're never, <laughs> never quite sure it will. Um, and, then, uh, and then, yeah, it ended up turning out great. I, had, I actually had enough money. I dropped out of high school when I was 15. Um, uh, moved to Palo Alto uh, to start actually an education startup, an online school, because I love learning, but I just didn't like the school I was at. And uh, uh, so I ended up doing that. And in exchange for my parents telling me to do that, I made a bet with my parents. They said, you have to go back to school. If, uh, if you don't make a million dollars by the time you're 18, you have to go back. And, uh, and I won the bet at 18. I crossed about $2 million at 18. And then, uh, and then Bitcoin has done, done well ever since. It is interesting that everyone that seems to drop out of school, if you think of people that sort of control the world, it's all, always the dropouts, right? I mean, like the, the most successful people in Silicon Valley, Jack Dorsey was notoriously a dropout. Bill Gates was a dropout. Mm -hmm. um, Steve Jobs is a dropout. Mm -hmm. You're a dropout. And, and yet we have this push where they keep saying your kids need to go to school, they need to go to school. And those kids are coming out and they're becoming government puppets. It's almost like schools don't teach you to think outside of the box. They very much are designed to make sure that you always remain within the box. Absolutely. I mean, and that's why I didn't like like high school. And, and, and th those were college dropouts. I did high school. Richard Branson also did that. He dropped out at 15 out of high school. Right. And Founders of Google, they dropped out of uh, Stanford. Yeah, yeah, they dropped out of Stanford and everything. And uh, yeah, I mean, that it, it just feels that school is made um, without uh, giving... I feel like the human race, a lot of respect. Right. Um, they, they just kind of uh, treat you like you're the lowest common denominator. Like they treat you like you're just a sheep. Mm -hmm. And, and then, you know, you just need to inject not even high quality information, just low quality information. And then, you know, you come out. And who was it um, that said? It was like some people are going into school and leaving school knowing less than what they did when they joined. Right. And, uh, and I thought that was very true. And I just felt like I love learning. And, and this school is going to kill my love for learning. And if I had stayed, I dropped out the beginning of my sophomore year. Uh, and if I'd stayed the rest of the year, another year, I, I would have never, I just would have been just like a vegetable. I wouldn't have been who I am. So is it fair to assess you as somebody who has been suspicious of the government for a very long time and kind of have seen that the government could assume too much power? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in North Idaho, so that was the very, the, that was the, the predominant yeah. opinion. So, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it's really shocked me. And it, I, I feel like, you know, growing up, my, my parents would put Rush Limbaugh on and that was my lullaby. So, I mean, that, that was... <laughs> They would read me Anne Rand before I went to sleep instead of like the little red hen or something. Right. <laughs> um, that's actually true. Great and parents. Yeah, I was always, I was made for this, I guess. Right. Um, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think recently seeing how they treat banking mm -hmm. has been terrible. I mean, before it was kind of like you could f go seek it out, the, the authoritarianism. Um, like, you know, breaking a, a dancing law. But recently it's just, uh, it's been so shocking to me how extreme they're going. Yeah. And you've also examined a relationship between Wall Street and the regulators, and you've seen that corruption because you were involved, and I honestly found out about this two days ago, with Wall Street's bets, that Reddit feed that essentially collapsed a large hedge fund. Can you talk a little bit about what Wall Street's bets were, how you got involved, what it is, in case viewers are not aware, because that was the biggest story for a very long time. Yeah, absolutely. So Wall Street bets was, see... They're, they're not just censoring you, political conservatives on uh, social media. They're censoring anyone that challenges the establishment and the current regime. And, uh, and Wall Street Bets was this, basically this community, kind of like there was Reddit the Donald, um, and that, you know, a, a community of Trump supporters, and there was Reddit Wall Street Bets. Um, and uh, and that, was, that was a whole community of people that basically said, hey, let's, let's trade stocks together and share tips and share memes and be funny. And, and, uh, and, let's, let's, uh, and then they ended up, like, uh, a lot of these people were kind of children. They're growing up and now have financial power for the first time. So they decide to invest in things like GameStop because that was their childhood place where they went, and uh, AMC. And these were all companies that were, were huge parts of these people's childhood. Um, but ended up kind of going out of business due to these like big, larger, you know, uh, uh, hedge funds gobbling everything up and shorting different companies um, to, uh, you know, make sure that they fail. And they basically said, hey, let's put all our money in GameStop or, you know, that we
we have in the stock market, and then the price shot up and bankrupted um, or, or close to bankruptcy these massive hedge funds that have been around for decades. Um, so it shows that it, it's not just conservatives. It's just um, it's it's even people that are just in any any entity that goes against the establishment. It's the, we have to ban you off social media because they got good at banning accounts, but now they're, they're they've gotten starting to get good at banning ideas. Wow, and did you, were you a part of the people that invested in GameStop? Yes. You make some good money there too? Yes, I made some good money on GameStop. Can you just tell me where to invest so I can like just do that? I'll just follow you, you can be my person that tells me where to invest and I'll just do it? Absolutely, absolutely. Everyone asked me for that and all that. I should really start a newsletter. You should, so yeah, you're, you are fundamentally anti-establishment and I'm fundamentally anti-establishment and I wanted to give people the background of how I got involved with the Freedom Phone. So you and I actually met years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, randomly took a flight together somewhere, mm -hmm. I think in Idaho. It was in Idaho, yeah. Yeah. yeah we were, uh, uh, there was a governor candidate there that we, I guess uh, I liked and I guess you, you thought were interesting at the, was interesting at the time. Right, and I thought you were kind of just a very fascinating character, very young, but also very fascinating and obviously seemed way ahead of your time in terms of understanding the problems that I think I, I knew it was bad, and I knew it was getting bad, but I think now people are realizing we are actually in dire straits right now in this in this country uh, when we're talking about censorship and we're talking about collusion, in particular when we're talking about big tech. Um, Parler, uh, notoriously after January 6th, the app Parler, which is, was an alternative to Twitter, uh, which was created by conservatives, got taken out by big tech, meaning that Apple dropped it from its store, Google dropped it from its store, which meant that everybody in the world has an Apple or Google phone, so now you can no longer get this app. And it was extraordinary to me because at that moment I realized they now have so much power that we can't even decide what apps, who we want to do business with, who, mm -hmm. we, who we want to do business with. They're now saying you're not allowed to, we're Apple and we're Google. And then um, post January 6th, my husband and I contacted Parler and said, how can we help? Um, we want to make sure that this app you know, makes it past the storm. They did, fortunately, they're back in the Apple store. And then I find out that you are coming out with a phone. We kind of, you said, I'm creating the Freedom Phone. And can you just talk about that and that process and what inspired it? Absolutely. I mean, it was exactly that. It was Parler. Um, you know, you could have the best software in the world, but ultimately, if you don't have your own hardware as a movement, um, they're, uh, 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 you, you know, you're screwed. Uh, the first thing that is done when you're trying to kill a movement is to cut lines of communication. Mm -hmm. And that sounds extreme, but that's exactly what they did because Parler, it was just on the on the precipice of of becoming like 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 the new global town hall. And that was the original. It's funny, Twitter's old motto was, uh, uh, the, we're the free speech wing of the free speech party. And we're the global town hall. And that ends up as a total lie. So yeah, if you don't have your own hardware, you're, you're, you're they basically say tough luck. Um, and that's why I wanted to create the Freedom Phone, which has its own app store, which has normal apps that your normal phone has, but the banned ones as well. Uh, and then comes preloaded with Parler, comes preloaded with Newsmax, uh, comes preloaded with a bunch of free speech news sites. Um, and uh, and has pri the default chat app is Signal, which is, on, is one of the most secure chat apps in the world. Um, Brave Browser, one of the most secure browsers in the world. DuckDuckGo, DuckDuckGo the default search engine, uh, which is a privacy-focused competitor to Google. And yeah, I mean, if we don't have our own hardware, what do we have? And what's beautiful about this is with our own hardware, we can expand so much just outside of, uh, I mean, being able to have the apps that we have. I mean, being able to have uh, uh, GPS directions instantly on your feed when it's time to vote, you know, important elections. School boards are one of the most important things and we're gonna make sure that you know you know when a school board uh, election's coming up because these school unions, these teachers unions, um, which are anti-school in my opinion, they all show up and make sure school board elections are not on the same day as election day in a lot of places. Um, so that way you never show up and you don't think about it. Mm -hmm. So I instantly knew Freedom Phone was a good idea, got behind it, got sent the phone. My husband and I are sharing the phone right now, which is not okay. Um, uh, because we got just one, you sent us just one. I'll send you another one, I'll send yeah, you another one. Can you send me a second yes. one? I'm yes. over here endorsing it, I'm talking about it and I knew it was going to be a great idea because I saw that problem coming which was like even if we save the app ultimately we all have to worship the Apple and Google gods until we have a different option mm -hmm. have another option now I'm so convinced this is the right option because instantly you announce this phone it starts trending on Twitter every single one of them came out against it New York Times I mean I have never seen that many hit pieces populate against an individual or a product um, that quickly since, I mean, I announced I was a conservative and I was black. It really, it's been, mm -hmm. I have, haven't seen it since then. But mm -hmm. they hit you with every possible smear about this phone. So I'm going to make sure you can answer all of their, all of their smears against you. 
Is this phone owned by China? No. It is not owned by China. Wonderful. Um, is Joe Biden owned by China? Just kidding. Yes. Not the answer. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. How did you create the technology? What are the pieces? How did it come together? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we wanted to. Uh, By the way, show the phone. Oh yes, got it yes, I got it with me yeah. and all that. So here you go. This is the phone. Smart has phone. Has a high quality camera. It's made of uh, aluminum glass. You can see right here. It has a, a parlor um, uh, right front and center. It's my favorite social media app. Uh, you know, you've got uh, Rumble, Telegram, all on there as well. You know, we got our own app store there at the bottom. You just press it. You have all the normal apps your normal phone has. Yeah, and it's a quality phone. You know, you got to like. I feel like that's the thing with some right wing tech products, um, uh, some of them are really, really good and all that. I really like Parler, um, but you know, they're not up to snuff. Uh, so to me, I wanted to make a phone that was actually just as good as your, your normal phone. And I think, uh, I think I, we, we can only go up, you know, and all that. We can, uh, I think it really is as good as another phone, as all the main top phones, and we can only go up because we're not focused on, on always how to censor you, how to ban you. I mean, it hurts innovation when you're just trying to figure out how to kill ideas all the time. Right. When we can figure out, we don't have to worry about that. We can figure out how to how to uh, uh, actually make good advancements on a phone, how to promote the phone, how to promote political engagement. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's a really it's a really beautiful phone. And uh, camera's and way better than the iPhone, by the way. And I, by the I way, I had so. thought in the past about making the switch away from an iPhone. So this kind of arrived at the perfect time mm -hmm. because I just don't. I hate Apple, and I'm, I feel like I'm forced to use it because there's no alternative. Mm -hmm. so you essentially took an Android. People were trying to understand this, uh, and they were asking mm -hmm. a lot of questions. So I want you to explain it. You basically took an Android and you de-Googled it. Mm -hmm. And people were going, well, Google, Google owns Android. How is that possible? But Android is open source. Can you explain what that means? Back when Google was uh, kind of you know young, they were libertarian, and all those people left, they had open sourced their operating system, um, and uh, just you know just a basic version of it. And basically, we took that. Um, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton acid washed all the Google stuff out. And <laughs> and uh, uh, and then you know, which was a dirty job, I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then yeah, and then we added all these new features, all these top-notch security features. My CTO is an amazing cybersecurity expert I've known for such a long time, and and basically all together, yeah, we made we made a, a phone that was an op a phone and an operating system uh, that that really has your privacy security in mind like as the first priority. One of the features we have, it's uh, it's called Trust, and it's like, uh, you know, you have Siri sometimes. We have basically a privacy version of Siri, and it pops up in your notifications, um, and uh, uh, and then tells, it warns you if someone's tracking you, um, and automatically blocks it for you. It doesn't actually just warn you, yeah, blocks it for you like a bodyguard. So that's just always in your notifications, all uh, uh, if it ever notices anything. Right, so basically this is the reason. <laughs> This is the, the reason that the mainstream media instantly hit the red button and said, we just write hit pieces and hit pieces and hit pieces because they want to make sure that there is no alternative to Apple and Google. They have worked very hard to be a part of that colluding pack of people. Apple and Google, they can control us, they can control our conversation. And this is really scary totalitarian mm -hmm. stuff that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people asked me also, so I want to give you a chance to answer this, but to Get this phone. You can literally go to freedomphone.com. Mm -hmm. Use my code Candice, of course. Um, and you'll get a, a small percentage off, 10% uh, off. Yeah, you get $50 um, off. But yeah, you, so basically, if, if they go to freedomphone.com and they get this phone, they can just take the chip out of whatever phone it is. Not a chip. I shouldn't say chip. It's a SIM card. You can yep. tell how tech advanced I am. <laughs> a SIM card, and they can just pop it into this phone, and they're good. Yep, absolutely. So all, all you do is uh, uh, every phone has what's called a SIM card in it. And, uh, and it's incredibly simple to move it over. Um, we provide instructions when you get it in the box, uh, so that way it's just, you know, it can be just a 60 second process. And all you need is right there um, uh, in the box that we give you. You don't have to go to the store or anything. Um, it's just all right there in, in the box and you can, yeah, just switch phone, switch your number uh, uh, and keep your plan all in the same, you know, all in the same card. One of the you know things I say about this phone, name one time in history where the people who banned books, media, and opinions were ever the good guys. And and it and it's just like, you know, how how can you do that? And that's the purpose of this phone is to, the ability just to be able to take your communication and, and not just have free speech, but be yourself and and paint what you like and read what you like and do what you like.
And I, and I talked about this earlier in the episode. This is kind of in the theme of the episode, just this sort of steady dehumanization of conservatives, that mm -hmm. we don't deserve to have platforms, that we don't deserve to speak, that we don't deserve to have our own phones, that we constantly need to be monitored. Mm -hmm. We constantly be to told, need to be told what to listen to, who to listen to. Um, and, and you are correct that um, it always leads to really bad things. It always leads to atrocities when you start to see this sort of rhetoric and you start to see this sort of censorship being directed a, 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 in this predicament. We're talking about over 80 million people in this country at a minimum mm -hmm. that we know who they're directing this rhetoric towards. Mm -hmm. And um, so what I will say in closing is that you had it right on Bitcoin. You had it right on Wall Street Bets. I'm taking every single one of my chances with the Freedom Phone. I hope that people at home will too. Thank, Thank you, you, Eric Finman, for joining. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that most important conversation about big tech censorship and collusion. Up next, I will answer your questions. We'll be right back.